is an unspoiled network podcast. This is Spoil Me, covering A Wizard Alone, book six of Young Wizards, from page 291 to the end. In these chapters, I read the original as well as the revised version. And oh, okay, well, it really becomes clear here why this author chose to go back and heavily revise. <laughs> wow. Welcome to Spoil Me. Welcome to the show, everyone. I am Natasha. Thank you very much to Yama for commissioning this episode. Yama is here in the chat. So, uh, Yama, did you read the updated version? Um, because Jacob, again, is the one that got in touch with me with the like side-by-side -side comparisons. I'll share the link to that document also, although for uh, some reason, Jacob did not do the side-by-side -side comparison in the same way for this section, I think maybe just because so much had been changed that the sheer volume was a little bit on like, I think that Jacob was just like, just, just read them and you'll see like, they're just, there's too much to really do a side by side. Um, I'm sorry, I'm trying to open my email, but my computer has been acting really weird lately. So it is not opening right away. Um, so Long story short, in the original, uh, Diane Duane has, she has Daryl basically like, quote, fix himself. Um, she has him use the kernel of his world and fix his autism and make his autism into a separate, like, fake version of himself to trap the lone one into thinking that he is there when, in fact, it's just his autism separate from himself. This is one of those things that I'm sure... When she was first writing this, this seemed like such a good idea. <laughs> I do not know, and I've said already, I am not sure what Diane Duane's relationship is to autism. If she herself has any experience with it. If anybody that she knows is like, you know, suffers from it and is dealing with it in a way that made her feel like it was something that you would want to be completely rid of in order to be, quote, normal I have no idea of her perspective on this and where she's coming from. So I'm trying to be somewhat understanding here of how a person could take this stance. Um, I'm, I'm sharing the link here. And what is uh, what Jacob has put in this document is the new version, Yama, of like major sections. So you'll be able to see. Um, but... In the edit, Diane Duane makes it so that Daryl does not do that. Um, he considers it. And then he says, it's part of me. And why should I fix it? And Kit chimes in with, you wouldn't fix something that's not broken, just different. And Daryl says, yes, thank you. And it turns out that because of his, like, Abdon abilities, Abdon? Can't even remember. Um, he is able to be kind of two places at once. So he is able to make a mirror version of himself that is enough to trap the lone one should he attempt some more shit that looks like he's in dire straits to make himself seem vulnerable. 
but in fact, it's a trap. It's all carefully laid out. Um, <clears throat> this is just, again, it's just one of those things that, like I said, I know, I, I, I can understand what the author, that, that she probably had good intentions here in originally, but it is really offensive and just I, I completely understand her urge to go back and change it. I am glad that it seems like she listened to people who came to her because it's clearly folks out there were like, what now? And got in touch with her and were like, that ain't it, chief. What are you doing? Um, but if you're a neurotypical person writing about this stuff, like, first of all, do you have to? You know, that's always my question. It's a kind of like you tread this weird line. This is the thing about being somebody with privilege in general is wanting to write about people with less privilege. You simultaneously want the representation and want somebody to do the representing that actually knows what the fuck they're talking about. So if you're writing about an experience of somebody from a you know, a, a group that is oppressed, a group that is different in any way, you have to be so careful about where you're coming from and how you're choosing to portray this person as like a representative of an entire group of people, especially if they are the only one of that group in any of your stories. That's often where the main problem tends to come from is that an author will include exactly one person of a particular group and they are meant to represent all people. And that's not really something you can do with that, with a character and keep them nuanced and interesting. You know, that's just not, it doesn't really work well often. So, uh, Yama is saying, have you watched Atypical? It's a great, easy show on Netflix about a family with an autistic son. It's really good. I think it's all very well represented. I cried so much. I have not. I haven't heard of it, actually. Um, although, to be honest, Netflix comes out with so many shows, and I'll find out, like, years later, and I'll think it just came out because I'd never heard of it, and it's been out, you know, it's got four seasons already, and I'm like, what? Um but this reminded me in some ways, uh, a similarly written, like from, from a perspective that I think the author meant well, but I don't know how many people out there are going to know what I'm talking about, but you all know that I grew up with a father who was like violently born again, Christian. And my dad did mean well, but he got me this book and it was written from the perspective of Roy Rogers' infant daughter with Down syndrome. Yeah. <laughs> like everything I just said, I'm sure that you're all going, what? Same. And it was this like sort of quasi inspirational, uh, like inspiration porn book, basically. Because I think the, the daughter died young. I'm pretty sure Roy Rogers' daughter, like this was like meant to be based on a true thing. But it's supposed to be that she is born as a, like, as a means to give a gift to these parents of like a closeness to God and understanding and, and patience and temperance through their relationship with her and their experience with her. And that she is like watching them struggle with her disability and they're feeling like, uh, her feeling like mystified as to why are they grieving? Why do they seem so upset? Don't they understand that God sent me here for them? Don't they realize how, perfect and special I am? Why do they seem so sad all the time? Like that is the kind of tone the, the book takes. And then she dies. But it's like, I was joyfully wrapped in the arms of Christ himself and, and felt so happy to be home, looking down, eagerly awaiting my parents' eventual arrival. That, that was it. 
I still think about it sometimes because it was just so fucking wild and so gross. And even as a kid reading it, I must have been like nine. I was like, why does this feel so icky to me? I don't understand why something that is like attempting to be so positive feels so not quite right. I could, I didn't have a language for it, you know, and now, now I understand. And that really feels like somewhat what Diane Duane was doing here was like, she was, she like it, you feel the temptation in the new version to say that maybe he was made autistic in order to help fight the lone one. Because in the original, it's suggested that maybe the lone one made him autistic in order to sideline him. And so you can sense this moment where Daryl specifically says something like, I'm not trying to say that this was put here for any particular purpose, but this is me. And I was like, okay, so I get the, the vibe from that, that she almost was like, my autism, my autism was a, a gift from the one as a weapon to fight him. Like she was going to go in the whole other direction. And then she decided to be like, no, no. Okay. No, it's, it is what it is. And I don't have to paint it either as a curse inflicted by the devil or as a superpower, because that is the other thing that people who are able-bodied love to do with anybody who has any sort of disability is then they try and invert it into actually it's a good thing. And it's just like, can't it just be uh, something that they like have to cope with just like anything anybody has to cope with. And we acknowledge that while not making it into like some sort of advantage because, you know, especially blindness, man, how many superheroes out there are blind, but like not really, you know, we're going to act like they're blind but they're essentially, for all intents and purposes, super sighted, actually, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, Yama says, I've heard those ideas many times that children with disabilities come to Earth for the growth of their parents. That's the one. It's they're not children. They're not like people in their own right. They are a mechanism for the growth of other people because they can't be seen as fully human or fully a person because we don't understand, you know, because we don't really try. We just don't. Let's be perfectly honest. Um, we, we tend to shy away from anything that feels like unfamiliar or awkward, especially I feel like awkwardness. I mean, I know for me just, Awkward humor has always been something that I like completely shy away from. And it's wild to me that the, the, our instinct is always to just be like, well, we'll either treat you like you are, uh, like not really a, a whole person, almost like a child, or there's the other side of things where a person will behave as if, yeah, I know this person's on the spectrum intellectually, but I'm going to continue to treat them like everyone else and not acknowledge the difference in the way that they process information or interact with people. That's not better. Just behaving as if this issue doesn't exist either. You know, you, you have to put some effort forth, but we expect the, the person who is on the other side of things to be the one that's always putting forth the effort to act more normal in quotes, like they are meant, they are meant to extend themselves to reach us. And we aren't meant to even meet halfway, never mind, extend ourselves all the way. So I'm just, I'm going to go ahead and read some parts of this from the original. Um, and then some parts from the new version. Um, uh, <laughs> This is the, uh, the original here. Um, what is the price for my freedom? It said at last, 
Once they leave, they stay unharmed, Daryl said. No more than your usual attentions in the future. If you refuse, you stay in here with me until I die, and I chase you around and around forever. And he makes this oath that he'll stay. And as we see later, like this in the original, when he makes this oath, it doesn't seem as if Daryl intends to to trick it like it doesn't seem like daryl knows that he can kind of find a loophole here um i didn't like this all right so uh kit says you promised to stay here i did daryl said but this isn't the only place i can be at the same time i thought i was hallucinating at first now i know it's no hallucination When the two of you started coming into my world, I was with both of you at once. I don't know if this is something most wizards can do, but it's real useful. So, okay, I guess he did know, but the way that he does this isn't the same at all. Um, So this is when he says, like, he's not a wizard yet. I can't leave. The ordeal isn't over. And Nita says, you passed your ordeal weeks ago. Now, reminder, she knows about him being an Abdal, but she can't tell him and she stops the lone one from telling him because of the, the Colonel and her control over that. Um, and she can't tell Kit, he isn't aware of it either. So she has to sort of make it seem as if he just has a really unusual wizardly ability and not inform him of his like role in everything. Um, And Nita says, uh, in response to Kit, because he says, I thought the lone one only starts noticing a wizard when he first says the oath. That's how it is for most of us, Nita said, but it looks like not all ordeals are alike. She was still treading cautiously around anything that would get too close to the subject of Abdal's until she could get Kit somewhere private and give him the lowdown. And I'm going to pull this up on my, uh, like the new version. Cause I have that open on my phone. Um, and I have the old version open on my computer. Um, so in the old version, I'm pretty sure that since the lone power knew Daryl was an Abdal, it wanted to keep him from taking the oath any way it could, because who could tell how powerful he might become once he was a wizard. Maybe that's even why Daryl became autistic in the first place. Maybe the lone one did that to him, but I'd better not get into that just now. And I'm like, yeah, better not. Um, and okay. So in the new version, um, the lone power definitely knew Daryl was an Abdal. Probably it just wanted to keep him from taking the oath any way it could, because who could tell how powerful he might become once he was a wizard. And that's where it stops does not add the maybe the lone one did that to him. all of that is gone um then what i'm not getting kit said is why your manual and tom's and mine all said daryl was still stuck in his ordeal that is not how this next part starts it says from nita and just the act of saying the oath accepting it for someone autistic Nita looked at Daryl with renewed admiration. You have to accept the concept of the other, that there are others, to do it at all. It must have been like eating broken glass. That is completely gone. That, I, like, so, apparently the premise that Diane Duane was operating on here is the, the, the fact that like interacting and believing that other people exist is like painful, which has never been the impression that I got. And I don't know if that was like, if that's sort of an antiquated understanding of autism or if that was just her interpretation or where that's coming from. But now it's beginning to make sense why some of the other stuff, like with the, um, the eyes staring like she edited the way that that was written so that it was more being perceived by people was what inflicted pain rather than simply the existence of other people. 
And he says, it was hard. The whole oath is about doing things for other people. That is all cut. That's all gone. Um, so Nita says, in response to Kit's questioning about why it still said or it was he was in his ordeal, in the original, Nita says, because he hadn't realized it was over. And because he kept just hitting the reset button in his brain and losing his sense of self over and over to keep the lone one trapped and never had time to let himself realize it. So his manual, the silence, stayed stuck too, and it couldn't update to the manual network outside. In the new version... Maybe because he hadn't realized it was over, Nita said, and she laughed again. Hadn't acknowledged it. The manuals go by the opinion of the one who'll know for sure. The one who says, that's it. I'm a wizard. Uh, Daryl said, I was busy. You really do concentrate totally on one thing at a time, don't you? Daryl raised his eyebrows. Comes with the territory sometimes, Daryl said, sounding just a little rueful. Mine, anyway. Doesn't matter, Nita said. You just got so concentrated on implementing your decision to nail the lone one down that you didn't take time to realize what had already happened. So the silence stayed stuck for you, too, and couldn't pass your status to the manual network outside. So, again, really different. Nita is sort of like here affirming that the hyperfixation isn't in and of, in and of itself a bad thing, but that it just, you know, caused him to miss something. And in the original, uh, the one, let's see, but, but, but the ones you couldn't look at, the ones you were afraid of because you saw it in their eyes, you had to promise the one and the powers that be that you would come out and do your stuff for them. What could possibly have been harder? And Daryl says this, that, Daryl said, changing his mind, in here, it's been safe. In here, I never have to look, never have to be afraid I'll see what might be there. Rejection. The ones who see me and don't want to look back because they're bored with me or I've hurt them or. And Kit says, I will put aside fear for courage and death for life, Nita said very softly, when it's right to do so. If it isn't right now, then when will it be? So this is in it, the whole energy here is really, really, really different. In the original, Daryl is still deeply afraid and requires convincing in a way that in the new version, he has all the agency and is telling them how it's going to be. This whole thing with them explaining to him why they need him doesn't even exist. Um, and the, Daryl says, it feels like maybe I got off easy. Is it just saying the oath? Kit looked at him as if he was insane. You're kidding, right? When the first thing you do afterwards is not just try to survive, but try to take the lone one out of the game completely. This is nobody's definition of easy. Come on. The game, Nita said, the big game is where we need you. Let's get out of here. Daryl turned away then, looking back at the mirror in which the lone one's image stood gazing out at them, pale-eyed, malevolent, completely still. One thing to do first, he said. A moment later, there was a second mirror standing there facing the first. Daryl walked over to it, and as he moved close, his own image appeared in it, but not reflecting him exactly as a normal mirror would. His reflection's regard was fixed on the reflection of the lone power in the other mirror and didn't move or look away when Daryl stepped away from it again. Automated oversight, he said, pausing to look over his shoulder and make sure the reflection's gaze didn't move away from the lone one's image, but he looked reluctant to do anything else. That's the letter of the promise I kept. It is me again. Not sure it's enough, though. I set the situation up. No point in making anyone else suffer for it. Um, I understand you're trying to do the fear for courage part, Nita said, but believe me, it's way better not to do it alone. I needed reminding about that. And without you doing that for me, no telling where I'd be right now. I mean, a complete difference 
in in all of the vibe here. Um, again, he stood there silent, his eyes averted in the original. All of this is them trying to convince him. And Daryl literally says, but I can't go out there. It's in me. If I go out there, it'll be loose in the world in the worst possible way. And Nita has to explain it's loose out there already. Your coming out or not coming out won't make a difference. But in this, in the new version, he knows that already. She doesn't have to explain this to him. Because the difference here is that they're like not treating this character like a child who doesn't fully understand what's happening. He couldn't have set this all up if he didn't deeply understand the concept of the lone one. So it really doesn't make sense in the original that they're having to like spell this all out for him when he was the one who masterminded this trap to begin with. It it doesn't work so the the alterations are much more uh, like i said just giving him the agency here um and uh there's kit says there's strength in numbers which is also in the original um i'm trying to find the spot where he says that but um I can't go out there, but ba ba their strength in numbers, Daryl Kit said. It's easy to forget that. He glanced at Nita a little shamefacedly. She gave him an amused look and raised her eyebrows. He turned back to Daryl. There are a whole lot of us out in this world, giving it a hard time. You were real good at doing that just when you were stuck inside and didn't have any clue about how the rest of us manage, manage it. Come on out and give it a run for its money. When you get right down to the bottom of it, that's nearly all we do. Um, so... This is when he says, uh, in the uh, the new version, there's strength in numbers, too easy to forget that. Too easy to get so fixated on keeping other people out of trouble that you forget they volunteered for the same fight you're fighting. Just the, that whole, it, it, there's just so much more respect in the new version. The way that they treat him feels so much more on equal footing. It's much less condescending, you know? Um, this has been a pretty cool battlefield, Nita said, glancing around. And you won your first fight, but now it gets interesting. Now you're a wizard. You've got a lot more territory to cover. So let's get out into the world with the rest of us and give it a run for its money. In the new version. Let's see. Oh, she doesn't even say that. I thought that there was... Okay, so... In the, in the old version, Daryl was silent for a long while. Eventually, he looked up again. And as Daryl slowly started to let himself believe that this was the right thing to do, that innocent joy and delight in life simply poured off him so that once more Nita had to brace herself against it. All right, Daryl said, I'll come. Nita had to smile. But one thing, Nita said, glancing at the colonel, before you do anything with that, if you have to leave part of you here, think about which part you might leave. That is not, that is not present at all. Um, here we go to, Daryl was looking uncertain still. Not real sure how that's going to work, he said. In here, control's easier. Outside, I've got a nervous system that doesn't act the way a lot of people think it should. Kit's eyes went to the colonel in Daryl's hands. There's a whole lot you could do with that, he said. Daryl looked at Nita. It's hardware management as well as software, she said. Extremely powerful, and here maybe infinitely so. Daryl held quite still for a moment, looking at the colonel, watching as the pale fires expressing the moment-to-moment -moment business of neural pathways went shifting and flickering across the tangle of light. Well, Daryl said, and paused. Then... He lifted his chin. No. They looked at him. No, Daryl said more strongly. I'm me. I'm what I've got. And then he looked at Nita a little strangely. Were you doing something with cards before? She stared. What? Cards. You were thinking about it. Oh, God, don't tell me you want to see me do card tricks. What? No, you were playing some card game. Oh, Right, I was. Just killing time. Solitaire. Do you cheat? 
What? Nita was taken aback. No. Didn't think so somehow, Daryl said. She sighed. I mean, sometimes I want to. But if you're going to play a game, what's the point of not playing by the rules? How will you get any good at it? So you play the hand you dealt yourself, Daryl said. Yeah. That's what I'm doing, Daryl said. The brain and the nerves and the mind I've got, even if I don't have them for some specific reason, they're mine. They're me. I've got a right to them, and I'm used to them. Besides, who knows what I might mess up if I started fiddling around. And anyway, why fix what's not broken, Kit said quite softly. Just different. Their eyes met. Yeah, Daryl said. Thank you. And that joy simply poured off him again, so that once more Nita had to brace herself against it. I mean, and I can't express, I read this version first, the new version. When I went back to the old one, and I saw this part, now you have to think about what part of you you might leave. I was like, oh. <gasps> No, because I kind of thought this might be where we went with it, but I was just hoping it wouldn't be this explicit. You know, I kind of thought it like that at its worst, it would be once the lone one was gone, he he came out of this state, this burnout, as it keeps being called, and seemed much more like himself again. But no, it's like a complete, quote, cure in this it's just really gross. Um, let's see. But, 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 uh, you made this world, Nita said. That's powerful stuff, and you can make the rules here. You can make them so strongly without even being clear on what you were doing. Again, see, minimizing what he was, without even being clear on what you were doing. Like, that is not how it's being presented. It seems much more purposeful in the new version that he did know explicitly what he was doing. He was being very intelligent and, and deliberate about all of it. Um, and you're not just inside the game anymore. You're outside it too. You can make it any world you want. Daryl looked from Nita to Kit and slowly surmised dawned in his eyes. The autism? Why not? You started ditching it the first chance you got, Nita said. You ditched it on Kit, for example. Daryl looked embarrassed. I didn't mean to. Daryl, I know you didn't mean it personally, Kit said. It's okay. You were doing a sane thing, getting rid of it. Oof. And when I got to that line, I was just like, ouch. Uh, that particularly really like that felt like I was punched and I'm not somebody who is on the spectrum. As far as I know, I might, I for a fucking all I know, maybe I am, but I was like hurt by that and it wasn't even directed at me. And I was still just like genuinely got like emotionally upset for a second there. Just, Oh, that got me really hard. Um, and then he asks Nita, why didn't you get it? It could be that a lot more boys are autistic than girls, Nita said, or that Daryl and I already had something in common. That a lot more boys are autistic than girls? Is that true? That's also taken out. Like, so I am assuming since, you know, all this came out that we are realizing that's not true. We all know, or at least most of us who are staying up on these things are aware girls and women are vastly underrepresented in a lot of different maladies and spectrums because our symptoms are extremely different and present totally differently in women than they do in men. And so we are underdiagnosed and also not listened to when we come to a medical professional with our concerns. So I am going to go ahead and assume that studies have since come out that like, that's not true at all, but that was what they thought at the time because the symptoms in boys seem very obvious or match up with like a list that they had created that really only included symptoms in women or in men. And since women didn't match, they assumed that wasn't what was going on. 
Um, Yama says, I'm so glad she changed so much of it. They shouldn't make the old version available at all. Looking at you, Audible. Yeah. And I'm like, this is the one that I downloaded off of, off of the website. And I don't like in both, I have to mention this and I've said this before. There are a lot of typos, even in the new version, the updated one is riddled with typos in this section just by itself i've came across at least four spelling errors and doubling of words i don't understand how this is revised as heavily as it is and it still has so many errors in it i feel like the editors for for her were not attentive i just keep noticing it in this series it's it feels self-published that's the kind of level of like constant errors and I just don't really understand how they could go back and, and revise this the way they did and still have that many mistakes in it. Um, Yama says, I'm also unspoiled. And by the end of this book, I was ready to give up on the series, but everyone said the other books are really good. And after this new edition, I feel a lot more confident going forward. Yeah. agree. And like, like I said, I just appreciate that she was willing to listen and she's made these kinds of strides forward because it's a completely dramatically different message that she's sending. But it is, I, I am curious too, um, how long there was between the revised version and the original, because she clearly did like a 180. Um, so yeah. Um, give it, Daryl says, giving it up. He looked distressed. I don't know if I can. It's part of me. So Kit said, is it a part you need? No, Daryl said, but I don't know how to live without it. It's how I stood being alive. It's how I didn't have to see the lone power at the bottom of everyone's soul all the time. If I go back without it, I'm going to have to see that every day. So Again, yikes, like, so, says Kit when he says, it's a part of me. Oh, like, it just makes Kit so unlikable in that moment of just, like, th- there's just this callousness that I'm like, Kit, Jesus Christ, you know? And it being presented as, like, he can't stand to look in people's eyes because he has to see the lone power lurking within. <sighs> what? It, like, it's just... What a weird angle to come at this from. Um, And I don't know if I can stand how much it's going to hurt. I might fall back into being that way. And that would kill my folks. I'm guessing your folks are tougher than you think, Nita said. Give them a chance. Give yourself a chance. If it does happen, you're a wizard. Listen to the silence. Pick yourself up and do what it tells you. You'll get out again because you're tough tougher than you think in the revised version. Let's just put this away wherever it belongs. Daryl said, and get out of here things to do. He held the Colonel out to Nita. She shook her head. Doesn't have to go anywhere specific. She said, so we go from him saying like, yeah, I'm just different. Thanks. Joy pouring off him immediately to him being like, let's put this away. There's none of this at all. Um, Imagine, and then Kit finishes this. Besides, imagine how funny it'll be when it finally gets back in here and locks itself in and then discovers that what it's locked in with isn't you, it's your autism. Just everything about this is just so messed up. I hate it. Like, I... (sighs) You know, I just can't imagine what people who were actually on the spectrum must have felt reading this. Like, it, I'm sure, I'm sure that there are people who were like feeling like this was a wish f- fulfillment. You know, it's the same as like any anything, any person imagining suddenly having a privilege that they don't presently have. So, of course. There is a part of you that's going, man, I would really like to be able to like be seen as somebody worthy by society and the universe. You know, there's nothing wrong with wishing to be treated well, which is what pining for a certain type of privilege is. But 
it's different when it's like presented this way. It's just a, a separating of this part of him that's being treated as like trash, literally like garbage and, and, and such a punishment that he's trying to inflict it on other people and on the lone one. Um, let's see. Uh, but, but, but I'm trying to find here it is. Okay. Um, Kits, uh, says thanks to Nita. She says it was my turn to save you. Now I want a few weeks off. Um, and Nita says to Ponch, I thought you said you weren't going to take the boss out again without me. Ponch drooped his head a little. He went, he said, so I had to go too. Then he brightened, but you got here when I thought you would. So it's all right. Um, and in the revised version, Daryl swept a hand out through the air beside him, feeling around. Oh, he said, as his hand sunk in, half vanishing. So this is when he, like, finds the little sort of pocket and puts the kernel in. When he says, oh, in the original, it's not clear that's what's happening at all. She says, use the kernel. You set the fig configuration into it for the way you want this world to behave. The silence will show you how. I had to take classes to find out, but this is your own world that you made. You're not going to need authorizations to work with it. Daryl nodded, looking down at the kernel for a moment. Then, oh, he said. He was quiet for a long time while he was concentrating. So this is this moment of him like putting it back is what has replaced him going into it and like changing things around. Um, so this is when he looks up at Nita in the original and she asks, are you ready? And he nods and she says, do it slowly all around them. The brightness dimmed down. I left you a space to slip through just behind there, but this is what'll be left inside. And this is when we see the clown on the bicycle going around and around. Um, we don't see that in the new version until Nita comes back when she's asleep. Um, in the new version, uh, ba -ba -ba, don't let it freak you out. Kit said, it's not just inside you. We've all got it at least a little bit. And we see it all the time. Nita nodded in the people we know, the stuff that happens around us. There it is. There's no escape. That's life. And life, too, Kit said. Because it also goes the other way. We get to see what we serve. And it's really worth it. Daryl was silent for a moment. The lone power doesn't make empty threats, does it? Well, we've heard it threaten stuff that hasn't happened yet, Kit said, looking just a touch uneasy. But point is, it could do the things it was threatening? Could... Nita said, but will it? It makes its declarations. We make ours and then we play out the game. We've done okay so far. There's always the chance of losing. Yeah, but the odds slide way over in its favor if you don't at least try and way over in yours if you play hard and smart. Daryl nodded. This has been a pretty bad time for me, he said. For so long, I was managing okay. Sure, it's always a challenge. The world can scrape me pretty raw, but I was managing. Then, wham, the burnout, and all of a sudden, all the ways I had to cope just weren't enough. He scowled. I think that's over now, but if it happens again, worse, the way it was threatening. He looked up. My folks will be a mess. I'm guessing they're tougher than you think, Nita said, remembering the voices she'd heard on the way in. So don't freak. Give them a chance, and give yourself a chance. If it does happen... You're a wizard. Listen to the silence. Pick yourself up and do what it tells you. You'll get out again because you're tough too. Tougher than you think. So that whole thing has been picked up and shifted to much later in the conversation. And instead of it being about getting out of his autism altogether, it's about coping again when things get bad, if he goes through another like burnout. And that just has a very different energy with it, you know, because even if you're not somebody who copes with this kind of thing, if, if, for example, I deal with depression, that's the sort of vibe that comes with depression as well. You know that you're going to go through it again, likely, 
And it's hard and it's awful to know that that's like in your future and it's inevitable. It will happen again and again. And you just have to like learn how to get through it and trust that you have surrounded yourself with people who care enough about you that they will help and support you and not just completely freak out or abandon you. Um, so do, do, do uh, I'm trying to jump back and forth guys. So forgive me. Um, <laughs> Yama says also deep hatred of clowns. It was horrible reading about a clown completely. Yeah. I really also, I deeply agree in just the clown imagery in general and also the way it's depicted here in, in specific was terrible. Well, I'll read you the thing uh, that we come to later on. Um, so solely all around them, the brightness dimmed. I left you a place to slip out through just behind there. Uh, this is what he'll find. Oh, okay. I lied. The spotlight, we do see it here in the new version. I just totally didn't like retain this until Nita sees it later when she's asleep. Um, in the original though, it's described differently. So in the original, in the spotlight, a clown rode a tiny bicycle around and around, never stopping, never looking up. Its eyes were empty. It was just a machine, just a fragment of personality without the soul that had once animated it. Hopeless, mindless, animate, but insensate. Kit looked at it and thought of a wind-up mouse going around and around in little circles waiting for the cat. That's her describing his autism, and it's just really, yikes. So this is the new version. Through the now nearly complete darkness, a spotlight shone down. In the spotlight, a little toy clown rode a tiny bicycle around and around, never stopping, never looking up. Nita looked at it and thought of a wind-up mouse going around and around in little circles waiting for the cat. So it's just tr treated much more like a booby trap and less like a part of him that he is abandoning. Um, Daryl says it'll trigger, trigger the oversight routine if anyone drops by. And if it does, I think I can find a way to make it sorry all over again. Um, so, but, but, but then they head out and Kit asks Nita to come to his area because he knows his parents are going to be freaking out. So he would like it if she was there for backup. And when <laughs> She, Kit says, welcome to the art brother to Daryl and hugs, uh, Daryl hugs Kit and then hugs Nita. In the new version, Car uh, Kit held out a hand. Welcome to the art brother. Daryl took the hand, then pulled Kit close and hugged him hard. Then he let go, turned to Nita and hugged her too. Later, she said, go home. But when you're ready, come find us. Kit nodded. We're in the book. Daryl rolled his eyes. The book he said and grinned. You guys are so rigid. Can't wait to show you how to swing out and use something a little less concrete. And he flashed that astonishing grin at them one last time and vanished with the ease of someone who had been doing it for years. And this is just a completely different energy. He's so competent. Whereas in the original, how the, he disappears isn't even really like described. It's just, oh wait, no, I lied. It's just a really short moment because he doesn't say anything about the book or them being rigid. It just, later he go home, she said, Daryl vanished with the ease of someone who's been doing it for years. So it's like a very separate thing. There's no urge to like stay in touch. Um, and then the difference in the next section is vast. Some distance away in a special ed classroom in Baldwin, the afternoon routine was proceeding as usual when one of the teachers saw something unusual happened, happen. Daryl McAllister looked at him, looked at him straight on. I don't think, I don't think I need to be here anymore. Can I go home now? That's the original. New version. Saw something unusual happen. Daryl McAllister closed the book in his lap, glanced around, sighed, and straightened up. I think, Daryl said, I think I'm done here. The teacher's mouth dropped open. There was another pause. So can I go home now? 
I think I'm done here. Again, very different energy. It's less, I'm, I don't belong now to this group of, of weirdos. It's like, it feels more temporary in a way. Like I'm done. I may be back. Who knows? But for now, I don't need it. There's just a difference when you have the context of what is meant to have happened already in saying, I don't think I need to be here anymore. You know, I feel like the the wording isn't so dramatically different on its own. But when you have the context, it just comes across in a way. So then we go into chapter 10. And we are uh, on the moon. And the I have to be honest with you guys, I didn't make as much of a comparison between these two because I was so focused on the comparison between the scene with the lone one and all of that in Daryl's mind. And I didn't see in the um, document that Jacob made a side by side comparison of these two. So I only have like 10 minutes left, but I'm just trying to like skim through really quick and see if I can notice any uh, there. Daryl, let's see. She asks, how your how are your folks doing? Nita said, you kidding? They're in shock. Daryl said, in the new version, how are your folks doing? Nita said. Another pause. Nita was getting used to this now. Daryl routinely needed a few moments extra to compose a spoken sentence, though anything that was a joke or that he personally found funny seemed to take less time. You kidding? They're in shock, Daryl said. He sat down on the rock beside Kit. They were hoping all along that I'd pull through the burnout, but the way I've been since we finished work caught them by surprise. So a lot more being said, more acknowledgement of the difference in the way that he communicates and her understanding of the way that he communicates instead of it just being like, oh, now he's normal. Now he just talks and it's it's no problem because he isn't he hasn't been separated from his autism, you know, um, and I'm trying to find another moment here. Um are your parents coping? They're coping great. Daryl's eyes shone. My mom and dad are. It's all new, Daryl said after a moment. They hardly dare to believe it. And I can't really tell them why they can believe it. Not yet. Eventually I will. But right now, wizardry be one shock too many. They'd probably think I was coming down with some kind of nuts to replace the autism. <sighs> so then we go to the uh, new version. Uh, my mom and dad are, he broke off, shook his head. This was another thing about his speech. Strongly emotional comment, content seemed to take a moment longer to compose. Kind of freaked out, I guess. And I can't tell them what happened or why it'd be okay not to be freaked out. Will you ever, you think? Nita said. Daryl thought about it. Eventually, he said, I'm pretty sure. But right now, wizardry be one shock too many. They'd probably think I was developing some new kind of trouble because of coming out of the burnout so fast. They're still having trouble with that as it is. Not much in the literature about there being any kind of precedent for this. So, yeah, but, uh, some kind of new nuts to replace the autism. Brr. Um, and Kit is like, yeah, I think that's pretty you know that that's good judgment because i just think that it would be a lot for them to handle um and then there's a cute part where daryl is like i can hear my mom thinking though and she keeps thinking maybe i'm doing well enough to start giving me chores again but she's still kind of nervous about it so i think i get a few weeks of being lazy before they start to uh expecting me to pull my weight um so, yeah, I thought that was actually pretty cute. Um, let's see. I might be needing advice. Then call any time. Dice he said. And a second later, he was gone. Um, yeah, and, and that's different, too, because in the new version, I think I get a few weeks of being lazy before they really start expecting me to step up. In the original, I think I get a few weeks of being lazy before they really start expecting me to be normal. Just like a lot of, of different small changes that are definitely jarring when you're reading them, but they 
pro- you know, I'm I'm just very curious who went through this with her. I have to assume that she had advice on this and somebody went through and like highlighted some specific things and was like, see, this isn't great. This is very problematic right here, you know, because there are just so many small changes. Um, so I think this is, yeah, this is the end of this section and them seeing him. Um, and then we have the next section with Nita. Um, Nita walked to school quietly by herself, noticing a lot of things that had passed her by recently. And if it wasn't for what's been going on this past week or so, she thought, how much of this would I have noticed? She had been locked up in her grief as surely as Daryl had been locked up in the other worlds of his own making. It had taken a major blow to jar her loose and Daryl had gone through something similar. That's the original, the new one. She had been locked up in her grief as surely as Daryl had locked himself himself up in the landscapes he'd been constructing to confine the lone power. Again, just small changes here. Um, And Nita mused as she turned the corner, thinking of Carl's mention of the concept that right across the fields of existence, quote, all is done for each. As far as she could tell, that meant every good thing that happened to everybody had some effect on all the rest of everybody from here to the edges of the universe. And I think that is completely the same here. Yeah, basically exactly the same. Um, now she found herself wondering if what she'd just been through, besides, and this is, I'm going to guess has changed, besides assisting in Daryl's self-liberation had been about helping her find her way out of her own pain as well. And if he was sent to help, uh, and if he was sent to help me way more than the other way around, that line is gone. Besides, if what she'd just been through, besides being about Daryl's liberation, had been about helping her find way, a way out of her own pain as well, is the original. The if he was sent to help me way more than the other way around is a new version. I'm not sure that I like that. That's the one change that I'm kind of like side eyeing because it feels so similar to what I was describing earlier with like, I was sent here in order to help you instead of it just being like, I'm a person, but also that's the job of wizards is they're on errantry to help people. So maybe it's fine. It's just one of those that sort of caught my attention here. Um, So anyway, this is when she goes in and Mr. Millman is revealed is indeed a wizard. I just fucking knew it, man. I did. It doesn't come to the surface the way I expected. Um, He basically does this thing that I really liked, actually, where he just tells her uh, that if there is something that she is hiding, she absolutely does not have to tell him. And I'm looking for this in the original and I don't see this. Okay. Yeah. I don't see this here. Um, bu- 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 oh no, no, it is in the original. Okay. Uh, I have no intention of pressing you. And she asks if it's reverse psychology and he says, what, like you're a three-year-old and you'll do the opposite of what I suggest? Spare me. This is supposed to have been counseling, not brain surgery. I was merely saying my intent was just to counsel you, not to dig around in your skull for juicy tidbits, like something, like something out of a horror movie. Okay. I thought you were going to say something about my anger. Anything that needs to be said, said Mr. Millman, I'm sure you'll take care of it. So, he she asks him as this gets to like this moment uh let's see the weapons held by the power that faces down the power that fell he pulls the ace of spades and talks about how it's highly symbolic i mean it's you know the tarot cards as well swords um so and he riffled the uh riffled the cards much too credible a riffle now that Nita thought of it for a man who claimed he couldn't get the cards to stay up his sleeve. Any last questions before we finish here? Are you on errantry? He raised his eyebrows again in that expression she'd learned could meet almost anything but surprise. 
No, Mr. Millman said, but I know some people who are. Oh, yeah, he says you don't have to be a wizard to know one. So Yama says, yeah, is he a wizard or he knows about wizards? You're right, Yama. This one, I thought that it, when he said you don't have to be a wizard to know one, for some reason, because he just said, I know some people who are, I interpreted that as I'm not on errantry, but I can see when somebody else is and help. And so when he says you don't have to be a wizard to know one, I thought that was like, you don't have to be on Aaron tree to see that someone else is, but no, he's very clearly saying you don't have to actually be and have taken the oath and everything to be aware that they exist. Um, and when you're, we, let's see, you don't have to be a wizard to no one once you know what you're looking for. And when you're willing to see what you're looking at, not many people are, but that's humans for you. Um, I'm going to see if that line is the same here. Yeah, here it is. Um, no, but I know some people who are. Not many people are. No, but that's humans for you. Nope, same line. Same exact line. Okay. Um, and she, he says, you know where to find me if you need me. And I've had a word with your sister's counselor. She'll be introducing me to Darien later in the week. Meanwhile, go well. There's a point here where Nita gets up and she heads for the door. There she paused as something occurred to her. Supposed to have been counseling, she said. Mr. Millman shrugged. Nita shook her head again. Die steal, she said, and left. I don't understand what that's referencing. I went and looked over his, his dialogue to see if he says something about I was supposed to have been counseling where like i don't know if that happened way earlier in their conversation but i didn't understand what she was referencing right there and i felt like i was supposed to but i missed it whatever it was um so okay yama says i didn't get it either okay good because i just felt like i i went back and reread like the previous like two pages and i didn't see anything in reference so i was like i don't know what that is about at all um so we go to her taking uh she's asleep and she is in the dream where she comes across the uh the clown again rolling around in circles um the doorbell rang kit glanced up as he was throwing books into his bag he would have gone to the door himself but his sister plunged past him what kit said looking all around to understand why carmella was suddenly so hot to answer the door I don't know what this is, guys. He thinks it must be clothes. She's pulling the thing apart, this box, once it arrives. And she lifts it out. Kit says it's some hair thing, but he hasn't seen it yet when he says this. Let's see what the directions say, she said. Kit looked at what he was holding. It looked very much like an egg beater, except that egg beaters didn't usually have pulse lasers built into them. Is it supposed to be that she bought something off of that alien home shopping network? Is that what's, what's supposed to have happened here? Yama says, yep. Oh my God. I, how can it end there? I want to know what this thing does so bad. What is she doing? How do you pay for it? Like what kind of exchange rate is there <laughs> i have a lot of questions um anyway all right i'm over time so i have to wrap this up but thank you very much to yama for commissioning this episode um thank you to patricia for getting me the new version of all the books from now on i'll be reading the new revised versions of everything and i don't know why that's not what standard to download on kindle but Thank you very much for that. And thank you again to Jacob as well for doing those uh, documents. And just, I really appreciate everybody chiming in because I really was feeling so uneasy about this all. And I, I'm gratified to know that that instinct was grounded in something real. And I'm really glad to know that this author listened and updated things and was willing to be like, all right, you know what? I fucked up. That's my bad. That's all we ask. You know, people can be a mess as long as they are willing to fucking listen. That's the main thing. So 
that's all any of us can really expect of each other or ourselves. So, all right, I'm going to wrap. Thank you guys again. And I'll be seeing you soon with the start of the next book, which I don't even know what the title is yet, but I'm excited to find out. Until then, toodaloo, motherfuckers. Network Podcast.